Okay, so hello and welcome back to yet another tutorial on my channel. Uh, this video is going to be an introduction to Python. Um, there are many different ways you can get Python, like there's the official Python website, you can use that ideally, uh, or you can use the Visual Studio on, or there's, there's plenty, plenty others, but I'm going to use Visual Studio because I'm using that for everything else and I like it the most. So, uh, first of all, file, new project, just like you would in the uh, C++ if you've seen that video. and already I, I have Python already installed here um, if you don't open Visual Studio find the uh, Python installation I'm sure that should be simple enough and then you'll see you have many many Python kinds of uh, projects you can start and for this we're simply just going to be making a blank normal Python application so this one here and we're gonna call it well, I'll call it uh, tutorial 01 let me just uh, put it in Python, there we go, Python tutorials, okay. And then just simply press okay, and when it's uh, created the project, you'll be greeted with a blank code thing, as most are. Um, now, for this tutorial, because I'm gonna work up in uh, complexity, this is gonna be simply, uh, well, how to set it up, which I've already done, it was, I mean, very, very simple. And how to do basic coding um, concepts in Python. The reason being is that in all the other coding languages, I've jumped quite straight into it, assuming you already know programming, but I feel like this tutorial is good to start off just for the first video or two, uh, to assume this is for beginners. I'm gonna say this is like a beginner tutorial at the start and then it'll get more complex. So um, the first thing I'm gonna do is what everyone does in any programming language, which is printing something to the console, generally, hello world. So let's do that. So in Python, uh, to print something to the console, it's very simple, pre-made uh, function, in Python, print. Uh, unlike C++ where you have to do a kinda complicated way of uh, printing to the console, this is a simple way. So you type print. Now print is a command and you have an open and a closed bracket. Now if you don't know what that is in coding, this is where you put parameters. If you have a function that needs to take in information to do something, that's where you put it. Now print takes in one parameter, which is a string. Now there's different kinds of data types. So you'll have whole numbers, which are integers. So like, you know, zero, one, two, three, whatever. Uh, you'll have floats, which are decimal places, fractions. Um, you'll have booleans, which is true or false. And in Python, true and false are with capitals, not lowercase like uh, other languages. Um, I'll get into showing where those are used and why, but for now, just know print takes in one parameter, it's a string, and string is text inside of uh, speech marks or whatever you want to call them. And that's basically whatever I type here is the text which gets printed to the console. It doesn't get stored anywhere, it doesn't mean anything, this is just visually on the screen. So I could say, hello world. I always put an exclamation mark, I don't know if that's the standard way people do it. Um, so what this is going to do is it's going to run the program, it has one line, it's going to print, and then this inside of the brackets is what it's going to print to the console. So let's press there. And as you can see, it says, hello world, and then press any key to continue, press something, and it goes. So that's a very basic, simple, you know, print. You can change that for anything you want it to say, and that's going to say the thing to the console. Um, okay, so that's basics. Now, um, let's say we put print, and we don't put um, the speech marks. We just put the number one, for example. And then make sure you save. I don't think you have to save if you press play, because it'll save for you. So obviously here it prints one, but this one isn't the character one it's the number one the difference between one and one like this is that the first one is the value one and that means you can do maths with it for example but if i did like print well, I'll, I'll show you an example so if i did it inside here and i did print one plus one you might expect it to print two but it's not going to it's going to print one plus one whereas if you did one plus one without you get two because that is actually doing the maths. If you put it inside speech uh, marks, it just has text. It doesn't mean anything. Um, so let's say you wanted to do a quick maths thing for whatever reason. You could do um, print one plus one uh, equals. Now, then you could do um, one plus one. Let me just test this should work. Yeah, so it says one plus one equals two. Now. I left a gap when it appears I, don't, I didn't need to because the comma gives a gap. So what this is doing is it's printing the text one plus one equals and then the comma 
um, goes from the string to do some maths. And then 1 plus 1, it does it, so it'll add a 2 to there. So 1 plus 1 equals 2. Uh, normally, if you want a space, you have to leave a space in the string because this empty space here is a character. But because it's uh, got the comma here, it doesn't actually need that. Now, um, so that's how you do the difference between strings and normal numbers and integers. Um, now, I'll show you um, booleans. So, booleans <coughs> are true and false, or, well, true or false. And you can print a scenario, I guess, uh, and it will output true or false depending on the outcome of the scenario. So if I printed 5 is greater than 4, is 5 greater than 4? It is. So it's going to print true. And if I swapped it around, 5 is less than 4, well it's not, so it's false. So that, that is pretty simple. Um, and you can use that for any kind of comparing thing, so whether numbers are greater, whether this is equal to that, whatever you want. Um, Another thing to note in programming, assuming because this is a basic tutorial, is um, when you assign a variable. Okay, that's it, variables. We haven't done variables yet. So a variable is, for example, a Boolean, which is um, like true or false, uh, or an integer, which is a number, or a string, which is characters inside that. They are all different data types, so string, Boolean, integer. Um, but for the sake of coding, you will be using variables all the time, which is basically a way of storing a value like that as a word, which is called a variable. So for example, I'll show you a good way of using this and I'll explain how it works. So we can have um, we can have a variable called name. So we just write the word name. Now, in other programming languages, you usually have to say what kind of data type it is before. And so I would have to say a string name, but in Python, uh, you don't have to do that and the benefit is that it's simpler but the um, loss is that it's not as efficient because it has to every time you run the program for example it has to figure out as such what kind of variable it is where in other program languages it's kind of predefined but we'll see so <clears throat> name equals now I could put Nathan now if I went down here and did print normally if I wanted to print my name I would type out my name but I can just put print name. So it's going to print the variable name. You don't want this inside speech brackets. And it's going to go find the variable name and print what it's equal to. So it's equal to Nathan. So if I go, it prints Nathan. Um, now, for example, you could do hello inside the. Um, you could do hello inside speech, uh, speech marks plus and then the name. Now, the reason I use plus here is because it's kind of adding strings together. You don't want to use pluses if you've got maths after it or numbers because it then messes with those numbers. You can stick to comma and it'll be simpler, but I'm going to go for plus. P plus and comma are basically the same with a few slight changes to do with obviously maths and leaving a space. But generally, look, hello, Nathan. It's going to do hello. It leaves a space because otherwise, if I didn't put a space, it would say hello, Nathan as one word. Um, and then that means what I can do now is I can change this to say, uh, I don't know, hello, uh, name is David. So I'd have to change the rest of the code. And the best thing about this is that you can change variables in other ways. Now, what I'll do here, which I'll show you the cooler way, is we can do name equals input, and then we have brackets. So now inside here is um, the text it's going to put on the screen. And the text doesn't mean anything as such. We can type what we want. So um, what's your name? Question mark. And the function input, which this is inside of, means that whatever we respond to this with gets saved as name. So whatever we type out in the console and press enter will be saved as name. And it's going to print hello plus name. So what's your name? Now, just for the sake of nitpicking, I want there to be a space uh, afterwards. There we go. What's your name? Nathan. Hello, Nathan. And you can do that with anything. So that takes in a thing, a string, saves it as a variable called name, and it adds the name after hello. So it's going to say hello and then whatever you've entered there. Now, that's really good for using numbers as well. Now, depending on how um, how much effort you want to go to, I feel like it does save um, any problems later on in the line. If you know what kind of um, thing you're taking in, whether it's string, integer, whatever, you should probably say it before input. Because, um, for example, what's your name? I mean, there might be problems if I did int. Uh, for this because it's not an integer um, 
it probably wouldn't work. Nathan. Yeah, it just crashes. It says, yep, yeah, basically, we can't get a string, Nathan, which is a number. Like, oh, I'm sorry, we can't change the string to a number. It, it doesn't work like that. So one thing you can do is you can do str, which means it says it's a string, which is going to work the same as it did originally because it assumes that it's a string because I typed in letters. Obviously, it's technically more efficient to write this, even though it takes an extra, you know, two brackets and a um, three letters here. It still helps because um, the computer doesn't have to try and figure out this is a string. It, it saves only like microseconds, but in a massive project, it'll save quite a lot. Um, or if you have some very complex um, algorithm, it will cut the time down probably quite considerably in the long run. Just get used to good practice things like this. Um, obviously, it's not going to break your program if you don't do it, but it's better to do it. <coughs> um, and I'm going to do one more thing. So how about this? So we could say int. So we're going to take an int and it's going to be called age. What's your age? And then here we're going to have an if statement, where an if statement is it checks one thing. If it's true, it does it. If it's false, it does something else. So we're going to do if, and then what do we want to check? We'll say if age is greater than um, 12, and then um, close the brackets. And then on the next line, well, oh, sorry, we need to use a colon, because the colon is basically saying, well, if this is true, colon, what should I do? Uh, and as you notice, if, it's, if you've got um, a colon here, it will indent already onto the next line, which will show you the code is inside this. So if, if um, age is greater than 12, print you are a uh, teenager, for example. Um, and then there's a few different ways you could continue this. You could have more ifs. So it checks if your uh, age is greater than 12. Uh, then you could do another if. So you could do if blah de blah. Um, so you could do if uh, age is less than, um, I don't know, two. <laughs> if age is less than uh, four, uh, you are a toddler, blah, blah, blah. You can write whatever you want. Let's just do um, age is greater than 12. Well, see, this is a problem because, yeah, if you're greater than 12, you're a teenager, but that means you've also got to be less than, um, less than, well, 19. So you could do if age is greater than 12 and now if you want to do and you can't just type and you have to do uh, double and sign because that compares. So if we do and so if uh, age is greater than 12 and age is less than what should we check if it's less than well less than 20 because um, yeah okay. Oh, sorry, in a Python you do use and, I'm stupid. Uh, I'm so used to using double and signs in other programming languages. It is simply just and. Uh, let's see if that works. What's your age? Mm, 15. You're a teenager. Now the problem is, if I uh, do something out of that range, whoops, I pressed, uh, I pressed play. Oh, no I didn't. I just have an S at the end because I accidentally typed S when I was doing control S. Alright, if I do an age bigger than 20, so 34. Nothing happens. This this uh, print doesn't get run because it's not true. So we can have other things. So we can have else. I mean, the, the easiest thing to do here is else, colon, and then what do we want it to do? Print you are not a teenager. But that's the simple way. I'm not going to sit here typing out loads of ifs and else ifs. But you could have things that's like, well, if you're less than this age, you're this. If you're greater than this age, you're this. And you could c account for every age and have different responses. So obviously... What's your age? Eleven. One. You are not a teenager. But this is checking if it's in between 13 and 19. If you wanted to write age is uh, greater than 13 or less than and equal to 19, you would have to do less than and equal to, greater than and equal to. Assuming you know basic maths, that's what this means, greater than or equal to, uh, less than or equal to. Um, normally in maths, you would write... Um, you would have the sign with an extra line under it, but uh, in this, the symbol doesn't exist, so you have to do, I mean, it's quite self-explanatory, greater than, equal to, less than, equal to, so. So obviously that does the exact same thing, what's your age, 19, you're a teenager, for example. Okay, I'll try and do one more thing in this video before we uh, end, so I'm going to do functions. So, 
this is all nice. So you start your program and you've got your code here. But when you get loads of code, you don't want it all just down here, all messy. Um, functions are where you can have code inside of a function that doesn't just get run. It only gets run when the function is called. So like for taking input, that's that's a function. The function, we don't see it. It's not in our file. It's just in Python in general. You can go find it if you want. Uh, but we want to make our own functions. So let's say, um, I, I'm not gonna go into any complicated functions in this video, but very simply, we could um, make a function called um, main. So we'll have uh, def, which means like defining a function, def. Uh, and we'll call the function main. And we did an open and close bracket to say that these are the parameters it takes in. Even if it takes in no parameters, you still need to have it just empty. And then we'll have a colon, and then anything after the colon is what's going to be inside the function. So uh, I can just tab all this in, I guess. It's probably a faster way of doing it. Now, if we run the program, nothing's going to happen because all this code is inside a function that hasn't been called yet. We can, you know, call this. So um, down here, where we would normally have our code last time, we're going to do main open close. Now, what that means is it's going to run main. Like we're gonna start, this is just kind of invisible, if you know what I mean. This, you can collapse it, it's hidden away. And we're gonna run main, which is that function. So when we start, this will be back to how it used to be. Now at the moment, that seems pretty pointless, but it can be very useful. And one reason why it's useful is at the end of your function, you can do main. And what that means is that when the function ends, it runs it again. So what's your age? 24, you're not a teenager. What's your age? 12, you're not a teenager. What's your age? 15, you're a teenager. Now this will never end because it's just going to keep going through and looping. But you could do like a loop so it runs it four times and then stops or whatever you want. Um, now that's a simple introductory to Python. I hope it was simple enough. If there's anything you're unsure of, just ask below. But this is simply checking variables, true and false, taking in input, outputting if statements, f else, and a basic function. Um, next video I can get into more complicated stuff if you want it. Um, I do Python at school as well as doing like C Sharp and Java and script and stuff at home. So uh, I've got quite a lot of uh, tasks that we were given at school that I can do tutorials on like how you do those tasks. So I think that's actually a really good idea that I might do in future tutorials. Um, but anyway, I hope this video is helpful. If you've got any suggestions, just put them in the comments below. Uh, thanks for watching and goodbye.